one thing that I want to caution people about with the aesthetics treatment is that um, it is addictive, especially like the young kids. You know, some people just want to do it just to do it because it's trendy. Welcome to the Beauty Talk podcast, where we feature how the best medical practitioners help their patients to look better, younger, and healthier. Now, enjoy the show, and here's your host. Daniel Gao here. I'm the host of Beauty Talk, where we feature the top medical practitioners in health and beauty, both inside and out. Now I have Dr. William Song here of Omni Aesthetics. Dr. Song is the founder and medical director of Omni Aesthetics, a cosmetic and regenerative clinic in Oakland, New Jersey. He worked as a board certified internal medicine specialist for 15 years prior to starting Omni Aesthetics. He's also a pioneer in autologist regenerative aesthetic treatment. So welcome Dr. Song, glad to have you here. Thank you, glad to be here, Daniel. Great. So Dr. Song, I'm really curious, uh, could you explain how you actually got interested in aesthetics in the first place? Yeah, so I always enjoyed art and I actually double majored in biology and art in college. And I got into medical school, so I became a doctor, mm -hmm. uh, but I always had a passion for art. So I studied, I practiced internal medicine for 15 years. And one day I kind of funny because I got a fax from a company telling me about lasers that they use in aesthetics and it kind of piqued my interest. Mm -hmm. So I called them up and I found out that there's a whole new field called aesthetic medicine, which is different from plastic surgery or dermatology because that's what you normally think of or that you used to think of when people thought about aesthetic treatments in the past. So mm -hmm. uh, back then you didn't have an aesthetics practice. So when I opened up my practice, I was still an internist, but I was in the field with all the plastic surgeons and dermatologists. So it was kind of interesting. And now that whole field has blossomed. So you have all kinds of doctors and nurses and MPAs and people that are doing all kinds of different things in aesthetics. So it, it's become a whole big field of its own. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the field has just been blowing up like crazy. There's lots of people getting into it. But yeah. I mean, I think that your background is a little bit more unique where you have the, the plastic surgery and also the aesthetic side of it that kind of combine those together and also the regenerative medicine, which I want to talk a little bit more about yeah. um, as we go through this. But could you discuss some of the most popular treatments that your patients come to you for and, and also why you think those are the most popular ones? Well, so the kind of the everyday things that we do are things like Botox and fillers that people love it because it's quick. There's minimal downtime. It's not like surgery involved or anything like that. But what we do in our practice is some more advanced stuff. And as you mentioned, we regenerative medicine. And that's kind of our niche here. Although we do all the things that the other aesthetics and med spas and places do, like the injectables and lasers. We have a lot of lasers in our practice. What we really like to specialize in our regenerative treatments, and that's using our patient's own blood and their own fat to uh, to harness the, the healing properties that our own body has. That's kind of what we focus on doing cosmetic treatments that are more regenerative in nature. Got it. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about the the new treatments that you're really excited about. You have something called an autocore procedure. So yeah. would you mind talking a little bit more about that? Okay, so autocore, the word autocore comes from autocorrect uh, because we, if you think about it, our bodies have an autocorrect feature. Anytime we injure ourselves, our cells know how to repair so if you have a cut, it's not going to stay open. You're going to form new skin to cover it up. And that's the premise behind most of the aesthetics treatments. We're trying to create a controlled injury. So if you laser your face, you're basically burning off skin and hoping that the skin will regenerate without forming any scars. The concept of autocore is what if we can stimulate that healing that regenerative cascade without actually causing the injury. If we just use the signal that your body uses to regenerate skin and repair, we can use that to actually rejuvenate and turn back the aging process. So some of the damage that occurs as we grow older from damage caused by sun or just 
by aging cells in general, if we can send that signal that our body normally uses to regenerate tissue, we can actually cause rejuvenation. And we do that by harnessing the growth factors that our body uses to send that signal. Where those growth, growth factors are, we find it, the easiest place to find those growth factors are in your blood, in the platelets of the mm -hmm. blood. So many people are familiar with PRP, platelet-rich plasma. So that's been a very popular treatment for a while. And you may be familiar with the vampire facelift, vampire facials, those treatments. The vampire treatments are using the PRP and we've been doing that for a while. Our training site is the vampire treatments. We train other practitioners. So what's become popular recently are taking that to the next step and trying to use the plasma as a filler to add volume. So there's um, PRF gel that's become really popular where they heat up the gel and use it as a natural filler. The problem with that is it doesn't last very as long as the artificial fillers, but people like it because it's natural, but they have to keep doing it very often. And what we did was we developed a technique where we put really concentrated fresh raw platelets growth factors back into the gel, which allows much more longevity. And it's gonna allow the growth factors to kind of keep getting released from the gel over a period of time. So instead of putting a filler in, we're actually stimulating your body to grow its own tissue, to regrow tissue. So it looks much more natural and it's auto-correcting can't mess it up because your body knows what to do. We just send a signal and there's very minimal downtime. So we're really excited about that because we're using that now for face naturally, but we were also using that procedure for a lot of different aesthetic applications, as well as for treating scars and joint pain and things like that. Wow. It sounds almost like the fountain of youth you got there. <laughs> that's, what we're, that's what we're shooting for. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's all, it's all natural. It's from your own body. So, mm -hmm. and that, that's really the best part is that it's, uh, I can't really think of how you, there could be any side effects with this because this is how your body naturally heals. So we don't have to worry about putting things in our body that may have some effects later in life that uh, as we're finding out with fillers, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the celebrities are actually having fillers removed from your face because they've been getting it for so many years, it just accumulates and it starts to make them look fake and plastic mm -hmm. and, and waxy looking because it's the, the fillers. We used to think that they they get dissolved away by your body, but it turns out they just kind of migrate and disperse, but they stay in there. So it accumulates over time. So people are really excited to have something that's more natural. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, that's an amazing procedure you have here. And I'm sure that this is one of the things that differentiates your practice from a lot of other ones in the industry. So I'm curious, what else would you say really differentiates your practice from your competition? Yeah, so in addition to this, I always like to kind of tweak and and tinker with different things. I like to take procedures that are already available and see how I can make it better. So we do more surgical type of stuff like liposuction and we'll do fat transfers too. So fat has is a very regenerative tissue. There's a lot of stem cells in the fat. Mm -hmm. So the autocore is very easy because it just take it from the blood. Um, the fat, we actually have autocore treatments that we do with fat. And with the fat, it, there's actual stem cells in the fat. So you're gonna get a much more powerful signaling effect um, as well as uh, longevity because the fat cells will kind of regenerate in that area where we transfer it to and it'll, it could last a lifetime. So that's, uh, that's another unique treatment that we do. And to get the fat, we have to do liposuck and we do that too. And we do what's called a high def liposuction where, where we can actually not just reduce the fat, but we like to kind of sculpt the body and remove fat to expose the muscles and then kind of etch in some of the grooves and, um, and curves and stuff in the muscles. 
so that it sometimes can look much more athletic yeah. rather than just skinny. Got it. Now, you've been talking a lot about these different types of procedures. Some is going to be more like the aesthetic side, but then some goes into almost the, not plastic surgery, but it starts to go a little bit more into that area. And then you're also mixing in the regenerative medicine as well. So could you talk about how you approach educating your patients about the service that you offer, their benefits, and really helping them to make the right decision for their particular situation? How do you do that? Yeah. So when uh, when people come to me, a lot of times they do kind of they are a little bit confused because they don't know the distinction between plastic surgeon, dermatologist, cosmetic surgeon. So plastic surgeons, they like to do surgery. They're surgeons, they like to cut. So if you're looking for an actual facelift or a breast augmentation with implants or do an actual reconstructive surgery, then you want to definitely go to a plastic surgeon who does that kind of thing. And also if you have skin cancer, I don't treat the medical stuff. Um, if somebody actually has a medical condition in their skin, then I would uh, refer them to a dermatologist. So cosmetic surgeons and aesthetic practitioners kind of fall in between. So I do some procedures like the liposuction and the fat transfer, but I won't do a full facelift where, where we're cutting. Yeah. So where I draw the line is I'm not going to do any procedures that involve putting anybody under general anesthesia. Mm -hmm. So all my pay, all my procedures are done with the patient fully awake. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we give them a little sedation. Um, and of course, we always numb them. But uh, our procedures are meant to be same day and um, procedures that you can get up and walk home or if it's a more involved treatment like liposuction, we'll have somebody drive them. But usually people drive themselves home. Okay, got it. Now, well, I'm sure that you have some people come in and you explain the benefits and what you offer. And I'm sure some have a lot of misconceptions about what you actually do. What would you say are some of the most common misconceptions that people have about the treatments you provide? I'm sure you get a lot also on the regenerative medicine side as well. Yeah, so um, yeah, with the regenerative medicine, I kind of fell into that because um, when we're doing uh, the treatments like PRP and, and stem cell treatments, that's not kind of stuff that most traditional physicians would be working with. So for example, the PRP, the dentists and the veterinarians were kind of pioneered that field um, using platelet-rich plasma. And then some of the uh, orthopedists were, were using it for treating um, joint pains and things like that, but not they really didn't embrace it. So when we started doing PRP and aesthetics, we found a really good niche for that procedure. And when people were looking for, you know, some people having osteoarthritis or joint pains and stuff, and they wanted a PRP treatment, they knew it was available, but they didn't know who to go to because they could they go to their orthopedist back then nobody even knew what it was mm -hmm. so uh, when they found out i was doing prp for the face they would ask me well can you inject my joint for me too and yeah so i uh, decided i would just learn how to inject joints and i mean i learned all that in medical school and hadn't done that in a long time but it was pretty easy enough to pick up. So I started injecting joints. And so uh, we built up a little following of people and it was all kind of word of mouth because mm -hmm. um, it's not something that people, I mean, we can't, uh, yeah, we don't really advertise that we're mostly cosmetic, but mm -hmm. that, uh, there's a there's a big need for it. Yeah, it oh yeah. And it works, and it works. Yeah. Yeah, and especially something great like that. I'm sure a lot of people, once they, once they know about it, they, they're all gonna be searching for it. Yeah, and then the stem cells, um, the fat, like I said before, is an abundant source of stem cells. So now the orthopedic surgeons are all into the regenerative medicine um, as well, because they realize that it works. And um, so they're all doing PRP. And as far as the stem cells, they're getting it from the bone marrow, mm -hmm. which involves doing a bone marrow biopsy where they have to draw a hole into your hip or into your to your leg to to harvest the bone marrow and that's that's a pretty traumatic mm -hmm. procedure whereas fat is so easy to get i mean for me anyway for people who do liposuction we do it all the time so um for some reason the uh, orthopedics are very reluctant to 
do any liposuction. I guess they're afraid that it's going to look terrible or something like that, mm. which is which is a valid concern because there's an art to do in the liposuction. But it's a very easy way to get stem cells from the fat. I mean, I feel that it's a better source of stem cells because they're closer to to the cartilages and things like that that we're trying to target. So that's how I got into doing the stem cells as well because the fat is so readily available for me. And then of course we do the fat transfers. We take the fat and we can put it into, um, we can put it into the face, we can put it into the butt, we can put it into breasts. So, so that's a very popular treatment um, that people are realizing it's a better option than putting implants in. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Now you talked about before that you, you're an artist and you got your major in art, which I think is fantastic. Anyone that I've, I've seen that has an art background that works in aesthetics, usually they have like a completely different mindset when they approach how they're doing their treatment. So I'm curious, what role does creativity play in your approach to taking care of your patients? When you're doing aesthetics, you know, you can kind of learn how to do the procedures and you can be technically proficient but I think you do have to have an artistic eye to to make everything look right and make it look natural and make it look pleasing to the eye. I think that's the problem. A lot of injectors just kind of go into it because they realize that it's a great field um, where they don't have to deal with insurance and things like that. But one day they may not have the artistic eye and also they don't have the passion for it, you know, so they just do it and you can't really um, do a great job if it's not something that you really love to do. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure like because of that background that you have, you've gotten some really amazing results for your patients. But I'm sure you've also had some cases that were extremely challenging um, that maybe they've gone to a lot of other places and couldn't get what they were looking for. But then they came to you and you were able to get them just an amazing result. So would you mind telling, just telling a story or two of maybe some of your most challenging cases and how you were able to get them that result with it, that they were really happy with yeah i mean we have we have a lot of those because the the um the treatment that i do are different from you know just cutting somebody and putting them back together we have to kind of look five steps ahead and see how the body is going to heal itself and regenerate and so a great example that is i have a patient um a man who, um, when he was a young boy, he was into chemistry and he had an accident where he blew up an experiment he was doing and actually went, you know, on his face and just mutilated his face from the explosion. So he had gone through like 20 different plastic surgeries in his lifetime. Wow. And um, he's, his plastic surgeons had kind of told him that, you know, this, you know, I mean, he looked pretty good, but you could definitely tell he was... You know, he had uh, scars and things, and they said, this is, this is the best we're going to get it. There's nothing else that we can do. So when he came to me, all I did was I did some lasers to kind of soften up the scars, and I put some fat, um, fat and stem cells underneath the scars to help to regenerate. And that made a great difference in making him look more normal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and by the time we were done, it looked like he... Um, you know, it's, you had to look pretty closely to see that he was scarred. So, wow. So That's I like to use that story. Um, mm -hmm. And then another story that I like to talk about, because I think it is important for people to know, I have, have a young lady who, you know, still comes to me for her Botox treatments and things like that. But when I first met her, she had, um, she had an interesting story. She went to a practice to get some fillers in her face now this happens a lot but people don't realize the consequences if something goes wrong is that the practice she went to gave her injected half a syringe of, of the fillers that they were using and then gave her the other half and said come back in six months when you need it again we'll inject the rest so she took it home put it in her dresser drawer and brought it back to the practice and they injected her and of course she got a big infection in her skin and mm -hmm. her face was kind of blown up and she went to the emergency room and they didn't know what to do so they heard that she had fillers and she was blowing up her face was blowing up so they de somebody decided to inject steroids into her face and it caused 
all the fat to atrophy in the face and she got up and it, yeah she, her face got really sunken in because the fat was was gone from one side of her face and she was very you know it, i mean she was she's a beautiful lady but you know this uh this really traumatized her because um it, it deformed her and so what i would say and then she got sensitized to, and people were trying to put some fillers back in to fix that deficit. But what we ended up doing was I put her own fat back in to where they had injected the steroids and we were able to get her own fat to regenerate. And it took quite a few tries to get it to look great, but now she looks, uh, she looks perfectly normal. And, wow. Uh, yeah. I'm back That's to incredible. Now. Yeah. So that was a very rewarding case. Wow. Yeah, those those are amazing stories, Dr. Song. It's just in incredible. Like you hear these stories about people that go to the wrong practice, they get the wrong advice, and then it almost tra traumatizes them. And all it takes is they go to the right person like yourself, and then they're able to fix that. So it's just incredible about just the, the kind of work that top practitioners like you do. Now, I'm curious, Dr. Song, where do you think the future of aesthetics is going next? So I, I think the uh, the regenerative part of aesthetics is what's really going to take off because it's it's much safer and we're actually getting much better, more natural looking results. And people realize they get, back in the early days, like, you know, somebody got a facelift or somebody got fillers or something like that. Um, and you can tell that there's something different about them, but you know, people didn't really know why they look different. But now that it's so common, unless the facelift is done perfectly, you can mm -hmm. usually tell if somebody had a facelift. And, you know. and fillers, I can always tell from across the room if somebody's had fillers. Um, mm -hmm. Again, unless it's done really well. Um, if you're getting fillers regularly, um, then it's it's going to eventually start to look fake. And uh, and that's the beauty of the regenerative aesthetics that we're doing. And that's what we're trying to do with the autocore treatment is to kind of shift everything to, to the regenerative aesthetics and we've branded the autocore name and we're actually in the process of training other practices to that to do that procedure as well got it okay well that's great to hear now i have one last question for you dr song but before i ask it i want to point people to your website at www.omniaesthetics.com now that's last question is what do you think, think is the most important piece of advice you can give to somebody who's on the fence about getting some type of aesthetic treatment done, whether it's something as simple as filler or Botox, or even something that's a little bit more closer to the, um, to the plastic surgery side, or even the regenerative medicine treatments. And let's say they're on the fence about it. What is the most important piece of advice you can give to someone like that? Okay. So, um, you know, one thing that I want to caution people about with the aesthetics treatment is that um, it is addictive. So, um, you know, we kind of laugh about it, but especially like the young kids, you know, um, that want to start so early. What I tell them is enjoy your youth. You know, mm -hmm. there's nothing that needs, you know, some people just want to do it just to do it because it's trendy. And I would say just wait until I certainly like when we get these like 18 year olds that that want like huge lips and things like that, I turn them away. And, you know, as you get older, you, you have genuine concerns, you start to lose volume, you start to get wrinkles. And when you're correcting it, what I would suggest is make it age appropriate. What you don't want to do is make your face, if you're 50 years old, you don't want your face to look like it's 25 and then uh, it just doesn't match the rest of your body or even your mental uh, state. The, you know, you want to look look good for your age, and mm -hmm. that's that's what we should shoot for. Um, you can look great for your age, but you shouldn't try to look like you're 20 years younger than you are. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, got it. Well, there you have it, Dr. Song sharing his expertise. Now, Dr. Song, where can people contact you in your practice? So um, they can go to our website, omniaesthetics.com, or if you're interested in the autocore, we have uh, autocore.com. That's with two R's, autocore. Or you can call us at 201-368-3800. And uh, we have a great staff. They're all very knowledgeable in everything that we do. 
so they'll be able to to speak to you and then um you know i'm available as well you can easily set up a consultation with me great well thanks again for being on the show dr song and sharing your message thank with the world you. thank you this was fun thank you very much my pleasure thanks for listening to the beauty talk podcast any questions please contact the practice directly with the contact information provided during the show we'll see you again next time bye for now